Okay, so let's look at some uh, flies that you guys have sent me and let's see how they might fit in a multi-species fly fishing system, however you define that. These were sent to me by Dave uh, Hutton. I believe you've seen him on this channel. He's commented many, many times on this channel. Obviously a classic here, a woolly bugger. I have caught many, many a fish on these waters on woolly buggers. You can tip it with a night crawler if you want. That olive brown black combo it works. Just a classic woolly bugger. Obviously a lot of little nymphs here. Look at this guy. Let's try this guy. Obviously we have some what looks like peacock hurl with uh, some ribbing. You know, I like a hackle like that that has a sort of a uh, like the partridge or, or that sort of checkered pattern. It really gives a simulation of a spider or peacock hurl combined with the the green flash there and the tinsel and then the tickling tickling of the uh, of the hackle there. I think nymphs are just about the best flies you can tie for just about anything quite frankly. And you see this one looks a lot like my uh, the spider flies I was talking. And again, he has a nice little body there, of green thread with some sort of a tinsel, flash tinsel or wire there, maybe to add weight. But again, tentacles that, that tickle throughout the water column there. Ah, here we got some classics here. Is this like a Royal Coachman? Is that what that is, guys? A Royal Coachman? I forget. My mom had, had some chickens that actually grow that feather, that spotted feather like that. She actually had some chickens and they're beautiful little feathers, beautiful little small chickens make small little, almost like bantam uh, eggs, really small eggs about the size of this spinner here, you know. Gold and red are a great combination. You know, you see that gold tinsel and the red uh, deer hair there as well as the uh, red thread and then looks like here I forget what the kind of feather they call that there on the end but again that's a great you know look this is definitely going to attract fish you got a lot of flash you got red you have a profile I can tell you that's going to be the profile of somewhat of a of a bait fish this looks like a dragonfly nymph or a damselfly nymph I mean this is what essentially what dragonflies look like when they are under the water. People don't really know, but dragonflies live under the water most of their lives. And when you see them as dragonflies out in the real world, it's long, they're, they're, about, they're, they've, they're already at the end of their lives, basically. That's what most fish in the water are feeding on. It doesn't matter if you're talking about trout, if you're talking about bass, if you're talking about anything. All right, now, if you look at what I'm doing with my tipping flies, notice he has some hackle here, right? But it's just, you got that hard back there that is, uh, that simulates the head of the uh, dragonfly. You got the body there with some, with some uh, dubbing. You got a nice little tail there with some sort of feather. But fellas, if you look at it, that is essentially with my spiral hackle and tipping it with a, a night crawler or tipping it with one of my maggots, that's exactly what this fly simulates beautiful little spider type pattern. I love these sorts of flies. It's sort of a wet fly type thing. Again, you see the body there with the orange. Uh, this is a fly that will work perfectly in my waters. This color combination is really actually perfect for my waters. Oranges, reds, uh, yellows. Again, I like that dubbing there. That dubbing has all kinds of things in it. It's almost like deer hair combined with tinsel in the dubbing and then you've got that that's a very buggy looking fly that'll be a nice little wasp imitation if you ask me probably the most classic bluegill fly of all time is this silly leg rubber leg uh type of fly you know that's you know those are just that's just like it's somewhat like spinnerbait material but those rubber legs you know they're just going to be tickling in the water. All right, so that's a good summary of Dave's um, flies. Now let's look at uh, someone else sent me some flies here. I participated in a, in a fly exchange or a fly swap, as they call it, on the Texas Fly Fishing Forum. And we got some nice ones here. Obviously a Thunder Creek minnow. 
Thunder Creek minnow is a specific type of minnow pattern where it you know you 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 actually tie the material this way and then fold it back and hinge it right there. And he has this is weighted with a weighted eye, so that'll that'll ride that'll essentially ride upside down unless it's yeah, I think that'll ride upside down. So I think he has the colors backward. <laughs> the the green should be on the bottom because it'll ride in, it should ride in the water like this since the weight is up top. And uh, you've got that flash there. Flash is always good. I'm not sure if this is a synthetic material or it's a very fine thin grain of hair. I'm not sure what that is. If it's a marabou, not marabou, I'm not sure what it is. But so this is, uh, I forget, whoever, if you're on the Texas fly fishing where we did that fly fishing exchange over the winter, this is your fly. Uh, here's some muddler minnows. I've always, always wanted to try some deer hair spun muddler minnows. Let's see. I have plenty of deer hair. I think a muddler minnow, this is a perfect trolling minnow, if you ask me. Now this deer hair, it's all spun deer hair. Boy, that's, I like that. that that's great. This will float. This will float off the bottom. So when I'm, uh, if I'm doing a, a, like a Carolina rig or, you know, a traditional fly rig with heavy sinking lines, this will float up off the bottom while the line is being down in, on the, in the grass and stuff. But it doesn't have to look like a minnow to us. It just has to get close. Now, I guarantee if he had put some eyes on here, you'd be like, oh, wow, that looks like a minnow. It looks like a grasshopper pattern. And I can see that this one has, has some floating. This will float too. You have some deer hair here, which floats. And, and most importantly, the body is made out of a foam. This is foam, like crafting foam. This will float. And you have that. You don't have to have six legs. You just need four. And you got all that hackle there. And you got that red there, which is always, it's almost always good to have a little touch of red somewhere in your flies. And I would use this with a traditional fly rig and in the summer fishing off those, just off those lily pads. And, and that, that thing will just float on top of that water. That's a beautiful fly. I'm just pick, oh, here's one. Here's a little. Again, another one of these sort of scud type hooks. I really want to, this is really, uh, this is almost a crawfish pattern here, I can tell. You see how it, uh, how the double wing, you got a wing here, a wing here, and then the, the tail there. It's almost like a crawfish pattern. Uh, this will work well in the summer in the rocks where I'm drifting over the rocks below the dam. And again, you got that weighted, I think I really want to get into some of these weighted flies and I need to get some scud hooks. Here's another, Deer hair fly. Now this, my friends, this will catch some catfish. Talking about catfish on the fly, this will catch some catfish. Big fly, uh, big beautiful fly. Look at that, silver tinsel, two big wings, deer hair everywhere. That, my friends, is a bait fish pattern, and it will float up off the bottom. Partridge, not partridge, but uh, what do you call that stuff? Um, with off those big birds with the big fan uh, peacock curl there. Now would I tip a fly like this with some cut bait? You bet I will. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you, you, this is what I do guys. This is smart. We have, these are from a guy named Bill. There's four flies in here. Apparently, uh, there's the, uh, I think he called the Lano, Lano bug, the Scrapion, the Larita, bluegill popper and the line breaker crawl. So let's see what these look like. So it's like a viewer, listener unboxing. If you guys have flies or lures you want me to display, just, I will definitely try to get, uh, get these here. This is some interesting looking flies. And look at this guy. Wow. I, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is beautiful. My goodness, look at that guy. Look at that guy. He looks like something from a Tim Burton movie, doesn't he? <laughs> look, I love the I love these silly legs, how thin they are. I'm not sure which one this is. Um, if you know which one that is, Bill, uh, just let me know. You can just comment down below and just say, hey, yeah, the first one you showed was this one and the second one you showed was that one. That, I like the weight on that one. And I like the risk of really I don't know, what is that material there? Is that a foam or is that a... I like the risk of really bringing the... Uh, it's almost like a type of crawfish pattern almost. I like the risk of bringing the flies 
bringing the material way back deep into the bend of the hook. That'll work best in my water, so I'm going to be honest with you. Perfect, perfect for color, color, your black, tan, oranges, somewhat reddish. I, I got to get into these scud hooks, man. I really get in, I got to get into these scud hooks. I think that's really what I want to experiment with next. Now this is another, this is definitely a floating pattern I can see that would definitely be, I forget exactly, that's definitely some synthetic hair there. If you, you see that's similar to some, oh we're talking. Uh, here we have some, a big blob. This will be a good catfish fly. And I'll tell you why. Because it's one big ugly blob. <laughs> that's why. You got some zonker strip there. Some dubbing there, dubbing body. And you got a nice heavy weight there on the eye. And that's a good, that, 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 and, and it, again, silly legs are, are, are good. That will catch catfish because it's a big, ugly, dubbing, dubbed body fly. Uh, I, I don't use dubbing all that much, but that will definitely catch some catfish. It'll catch some bass, especially since it's olive. Uh, it has some little hints of red in it, a little brown in it. Essentially, almost like a woolly bugger, only you're just using zonker strip and silly legs for the tail and you're using dubbing nice dub see that, that stuff will just come out dubbing for the body and then some big ugly thing this will work pretty well reds work pretty well in my water um, but I think the, the green would be would be better okay again something that'll ride upside down like that and it'll sink because you got the big lead eyes there and that and that's a nice hook for catfish that would be a good catfish rig well now this would be the perfect color color combination it's almost like, it's really, it really seems like a crawfish-ish like pattern. Really big bodied fly. If I dip this in my bait scent, it would hold so much bait scent, it would just be awesome. All right, yeah, so again, that would be a floater. The fish don't care the shape of that front edge there. They really don't care. They see it, they see that red, they see that sparkle there, they see that green. It's like, okay, hey, this looks good. Let's take a, let's hit it. And they'll hit it. You know, bluegill will hit it a lot of times just to try to kill it and make it sink. That's one of the reasons why I prefer a wet fly instead of a purely floating fly because the bluegill will hit it, but they won't take it. They hit it to kill it, to get it to sink. And if you use a traditional wet fly that automatically sinks when it hits the water, you'll, the bluegill will automatically be more adept to hit it because it's already they, they, half their job's done. Okay, fellas, so this is going to be the last in this little series in multi-species fly fishing. Um, I'm, I'm ready to move on to something else, but I hope you learned a lot and I hope you have uh, understood that, hey, look, things don't always have to look a certain way. Now, one thing I want to say, Rat Dog, he sent me some flies as well, but I doggone it if I didn't set them down and I don't remember where I put them. So if and when I fly, find his flies, I will add another video particularly for the flies that he sent me because he is a supporter of the channel he's always commenting he sent things like that i set it here and then i cleaned up and i don't know where i put it and i thought i had put them all the ones in one spot but it looks like i didn't um just remember fly fishing can be whatever you want it to be it doesn't have to be any particular convention if you look around the world at the way people approach fly fishing you see some very different approaches that don't look like river runs through it. Uh, river runs through it is not the definition of fly fishing. If you're interested in some flies, I have flies for sale on my website. Just check out blackwarrelures.com. You know, buy my stuff. That's how the channel grows. You know, I have a fishing tackle shop. Many don't know that. Blackwarrelures.com, and go there and see if you see something you like. See what you can see. And I will greatly appreciate it, and I'll get those products out to you as quickly as I can. All right, uh, it's time to get ready for some jug fishing. <laughs> Enough of this fly fishing talk. <laughs>